Hi besties, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new video. So today's video is one that I have never done before. Today I want to do an ultimate book video. So I am planning on doing a bunch of bookish things today and I wanted to take you guys along while I did them. First things first, we have to go to Barnes. We have to go to a bookstore, you guys. It's Sunday, it's kind of cloudy out right now, and I just feel like I need to be in a Barnes & Noble. So I'm going to take you guys along for that. There are a couple of books that I have my eye on that I'm hoping to pick up, and besides those books, we are just going to peruse around the bookstore. And then I also wanted to do a bit of a book haul. I have a few books that I've acquired over the last few months that I wanted to sit down and show you guys in a proper book haul, and I'll include whatever I get at the bookstore as well. And then I also want to spend a good portion of today reading. So I'm currently reading A Touch of Golden Madness by K.L. DeVore. I am vlogging this book for another video, so you'll see more of my detailed thoughts in that video, but I want to sit down and read a good chunk today, and I will give you guys my thoughts on how that book is going as I read a little bit more today. So I think this sounds like absolutely the perfect day. We are hauling books, we are shopping, and we are reading, and I'm really excited to take you guys along. So first things first, let's go to Barnes & Noble and do some book shopping. friends. So I am back from Barnes. It was interesting. I went to a Barnes & Noble that I hadn't been to before and it was one of those like updated, very streamlined and sleek Barnes & Noble. Those barns they give me like airport bookstore vibes i really love and miss the like mid 2000s barnes and noble aesthetic there is one barns near me that does still have kind of like that older barnes and noble interior and i just love it it's so much cozier i feel like it fits so much more with a bookstore aesthetic these new updated ones are just i don't know they feel a little cold a little corporate i wish that barns would go like backwards with their style design like more vintage and just make them so much cozier. I feel like I'm in an airport when I walk into those Barnes & Noble. But the one good thing is the lighting was really low, which is kind of nice. So like that sets a bit of an ambiance, but I'm not a huge fan of the new Barnes & Noble updated kind of interior. However, I did still have a great time and I got two books. I feel like there were so many contemporary romances that I could have picked up. There were probably like five or six that I saw that I was like, oh yeah, I've heard like good things about that. I could get that. But I'm really trying to not buy physical copies of contemporary romances, unless it is an author that I am just like fully committed to reading all of their books. Because while I do enjoy contemporary romance, I am obviously just so much more of a fantasy reader and I really just don't wanna buy a bunch of contemporary romances just because like I think that they sound good. With fantasy, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> if a fantasy sounds mildly good and I've heard nothing about it, I'm taking it home with me. But with contemporary romance, I'm trying to be a little bit pickier about that. There's really just a few authors that I will always pick up their books when they come out with a new romance. Emily Henry is one, Elsie Silver is another, and then Allie Hazelwood. I just, I can't quit her. I've only given one of her books five stars, and then I've given a two-star rating to one of her books, a three-star, and a four-star. So really, I've given her kind of the full array, but I don't know. There's something in my brain that's like, Allie Hazelwood's coming out with a new book. I need to read it. So she's probably an author that I will always continue to purchase new releases from. She has that like swimmer romance coming out next year that I'm so excited for. I think that that sounds so good. But other than those select few, I'm really trying to just not buy contemporary romances, like just to buy a book, just because I feel 
feel like so rarely am I absolutely obsessed with a contemporary romance and I don't typically reread contemporary romances. I will if they're like all-time faves, but I just want to keep as much room on my shelves for fantasy as possible. So all that to say, I only picked up two books. The first one I picked up was Beneath the Cursed Stars by Lexi Ryan. This is a YA fantasy and there is a romance subplot. I don't know if it's like officially a fantasy romance. I mean, that cover in the back definitely gives fantasy romance. This purchase was definitely a bit of a cover buy. I just love this art style and I think it just looks really cool. But also this book exists in the same universe as These Hollow Vows, which is a, another duology by the same author. And I read These Hollow Vows, God, like two years ago at this point, I think like fall of 2022, I read These Hollow Vows. Oh yeah, I read it on the plane to Italy. So I like associate that book with my trip to Italy, which is like very random, but I read the whole book on the plane and I enjoyed myself. I think I gave it three and a half or four stars. I haven't picked up the second book yet, but I definitely want to do that. And then I will dive into this. This isn't like a highly anticipated five-star prediction for me, but I think that these are just fun, fey fantasy romances. These books kind of remind me of the world in The Cruel Prince. And I just think they would be really fun, especially for fall and winter as we are entering those seasons. But yeah, I just love this cover so much. And then I also picked up Gold by Raven Kennedy. This was kind of the main reason that I wanted to go to the bookstore because this book just came out in this new paperback, which was published by Bloom. And I just love these paperbacks so much. They're such high quality and they just feel so good. They're also pretty floppy. So this is the fifth book in the Plated Prisoner series. I am doing a video for the entire series, so I will get to this eventually. I have quite a few books to pick up before then, but I'm excited about this. All right, so now I just have like a little mini book haul for you guys. Just books that I have either purchased myself or been sent over the last few months that I don't believe I have showed you guys in vlogs yet. So I just have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, just 10. That's totally harmless. All right, first up, I have the Dawn of the Cursed Queen. And in my last like unboxing video, I thought that I was gonna be opening an Amazon package and see this book, but I saw this like weird, I don't know, like test cover version that was essentially just like all black with a little bit of a design like in the corner and the title was really small. So it wasn't the official version of the Dawn of the Cursed Queen. So I ended up returning that and then getting this one instead. But this is the third book in the Gods and Monsters series, which is an urban fantasy romance. And I'm really excited to pick up this book. I do have it on my TBR for August. So I will hopefully read it in the next few weeks. And then I have A Queen, This Fierce and Deadly by Stasia Stark. This is the fourth and final book in the Kingdom of Lies series. So I read books one and two and I really enjoyed them. I think I gave them like three and a half, four stars. This is another new adult fantasy romance series. And now that the finale is out, I really want to get to this. I remember after finishing book two being shocked because the cliffhanger is really crazy in that book. So I think that over the next few months, I'm going to work on getting through this series. All right. And then I got these amazing editions of the House of Devils series. So these came out in hardcover and they're like these beautiful special edition hardcovers that I just had to have. So look at these covers. It says, welcome to Angel Fiend, which is the world in the series and they have quotes on the back and then they also have art inside of them. And I'm giving this series another shot. I did read this first book like two years ago and I didn't really enjoy it, but one of my friends has very similar taste to me. She ended up picking up book two and she said it was so much better. And she like agreed with my criticisms of book one and was like, just keep going, please. This is an amazing urban fantasy romance. You need to give it another shot. So I'm going to do that. Look at this art style, so, so pretty. I'm just really excited about these. I actually think I'm gonna have these on my shelves without the dust jackets because I think this is just so much cooler. And then this is the second book, City of Souls and Sinners, which I have not read. So this is definitely the one that I want to get to. Also, I love the quote on the back of this one. It says, welcome back to Angel Fiend. Be careful who you trust. I'm actually really excited to read this series again. I've had a ton of luck with revisiting series that I didn't love a couple years ago. And I feel like because my taste has changed and been defined so so much over the last two years that I have a really good chance of enjoying this. And I hope that I do because I am always on the hunt for urban fantasy romance that I love. And maybe this is a case where the first book might be the weakest, but then book two is where I really fall in love with it. So I hope that happens with the series. All right. And then when I went to Houston in June, I picked up a few books and I don't think I showed you guys in any videos. So the first book I got was A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine. I love this cover so much. And I've seen quite a bit of praise for this book on Bookstagram. I feel like this will be a really good book to read in the fall. It just 
gives me fall vibes, like a dark, wicked fae type of story. And on the back, it says our main character is a changeling and she's been left behind by the wicked fair folk when they stole the High Queen's daughter and retreated behind the locked gates of the folk realm. Rather than leave Fia, our main character, as an outcast, the queen takes her in and trains her to be a spy. I think this sounds really cool and like the perfect like October or November read. So on that same shopping trip, I picked up Not In Love by Allie Hazelwood. As I said, I cannot quit Allie Hazelwood. And I'm really curious about this one. I've seen so many mixed reactions to this book. I know that it is different than her other STEM romances and I'm kind of expecting a different tone going into this, but I'm intrigued honestly, because I've only loved one of her STEM romances, which is Love on the Brain. So I'm kind of hoping that I will really click with this because her other books I just haven't been as obsessed with. So even though I've seen very mixed things, I've seen people loving it, I've seen people like giving it two stars, I hope that I end up liking this because I think something a little bit different from Allie Hazelwood sounds really good to me. And another book that I picked up on that trip was Trist Six Venom by Penelope Douglas. Once again, I've kind of had some mixed experience with their books, but Birthday Girl is one of my favorite books of all time. I think it is such a beautiful romance. And I've always been curious about Trist Six Venom. It is a sapphic romance and I believe it's a bully romance as well. I know that I have the capacity to absolutely love Penelope Douglas's books. I also read, I forget the first book in the like Devil's Night series. I forget what the name of it was, but I gave that four stars too. So I've had more luck with their books than not. So I wanna try out Trist Six Venom and see what I think. Another book that I picked up recently is Sunburn by Chloe Michelle Howard. So this is a sapphic like coming of age story. I don't know if it's a romance or if it's more like literary fiction, but it is set in Ireland in the nineties and just kind of follows the sapphic love story. So I think that there is a bit more of a serious tone to this book. I think it's really gonna pull at my heartstrings and I'm looking forward to it. The next book I was sent by the publisher, which is Bloom, and that is Love Unwritten by Lauren Asher. So this is the second book in the Lakefront Billionaire series. I read the first book, Love Redesigned, at the end of last year, and I really loved it. I gave it four stars, and they very kindly sent me the sequel. And this book has like my all-time favorite contemporary romance trope, which is Manny, single dad. So I think this is gonna be super fun whenever I pick it up. All right, and then I have this copy of Quicksilver, which is kind of the original cover. But then I saw that the author put out this version, which I think is just so, so pretty, and I like it a lot more than this cover. Cover. I'm not against people covers. I think that when they're done well, I honestly prefer them, but I'm just not vibing. I don't know what it is, but this is not how I pictured Kingfisher, by the way. I don't know. It's it's like fine. It's whatever. But I just think that this edition is really cool and preferable, honestly. And yeah, I just, I saw this and I was like, oh, I prefer this version. So I don't know. I might end up unhauling this version. We'll see, but I'm happy that I have this. All right, so now it is time to read Besties. So as I said, I'm reading A Touch of Golden Madness by K.L. DeVore. I am currently a third of the way through this book and I am vlogging it and I'm going to be way more detailed in that vlog with my thoughts. I will just let you guys know right now, it is so good and it is so unique. It's like a post-apocalyptic dystopian fantasy romance and it takes place in Atlanta, I think in like 2025. And like they reference things in our world. It is set in our world. They referenced like GQ magazine. They referenced Pop-Tarts. I don't know, I was not expecting that, but it's really cool. Genuinely one of the most unique fantasy romances that I've ever read. We have our two main characters, Grey and Griffin. It's dual POV, which is really great. And they are kind of opposing royalty. Grey is the princess of the kinetic people. And then Griffin is kind of the prince of the elemental people. And they used to all live amongst the humans, but after their people warred and kind of just decimated life as we know it. A lot of the humans live underground and then the elementals and kinetics are kind of just warring above ground still. And there's like a ton of mystery too. Like that is the plot as I have gathered it so far, but there are secrets. There are major secrets between our characters and about their past. And like our male main character has this like bloodthirsty demon maybe inside of him. I don't even know, but there's definitely a lot hidden from the reader and hidden from the two characters. So I'm really liking it and I want to go read it. So I'm gonna listen to the audiobook and probably put these books away. And when I get a little bit farther, I will let you guys know how it's going. my love. So I am here to close out this ultimate book video. So last night I was able to finish A Touch of Gold and Madness. I spent like the majority of the second half of the day just binging that book. I read over 350 pages, which is fantastic. And that book melted my brain. 
to be honest with you, that book is coming in a vlog very, very soon, so I will give you guys all of the details then, but I'm still thinking about it. I don't know what way is up now. Like, that ending really did a number on me, but I had so much fun reading it, and I'm really glad that I got to finish it last night. So that is going to be it for this Ultimate Bookish video. We went book shopping, we did a little haul, and I was able to spend the day reading and ended up finishing a book. Truly, it was the perfect day, and I'm so glad that I got to bring you guys along with me. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the book stack emoji. And please make sure that you are following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.